Hello friends. Thank you for joining me for Color Theory. This is a class that I'm hoping will be really informative and also teach you some interesting things about color mixing and color theory itself. A color wheel is just one of the many types of ways that you can organize and see how color works together. How do we see color? Well, an object doesn't actually have inherent color. Instead, it's what is reflected off of the surface. Some colors are reflected and actually some are absorbed. So when you are seeing a color, you are seeing what's reflected back to you. An interesting fact, birds, fish, and other mammals perceive full spectrum of color, but bees, for example, can actually see colors that are invisible to humans. Okay, let's have a little fun doing maybe an experiment with after image. I'm going to bring this uh, green square in this shape. And what I want you to do is go ahead and look closely at this green square for 30 seconds. Okay, now take your gaze over to the white paper. Do you see a red square? That's part of the science of color theory that's really neat. Maybe you wanna do another one. Try this one. Okay, once you look over here, what do you see? Do you see a red square with a green triangle inside? You can even try with some other colors as well. Here I have a yellow triangle and a purple triangle too. What's something that you can tell is the pattern here between all these different colors? If you guess that it's because they're opposites, you are absolutely correct. These colors are what we call complementary colors. And if you've stared at this one long enough, go ahead and look at there. Do you get the purple, a big purple triangle with a small yellow triangle inside? Pretty cool, huh? Here we have a basic color wheel. These will have the primary colors of red, yellow, blue, and you'll also have your secondary colors. So in between these will be orange, green, and violet or purple. And we're also looking at tertiary colors. Those are colors that are in between primary and secondary colors. So we have red and orange, Red, orange, orange and yellow, yellow, orange, green and yellow, yellow, green, green and blue, blue, green, blue and violet, blue, violet, violet and red, red, violet. So this is one way to organize how all the different colors are together and work in cohesion in a color wheel. Okay, let's have some fun painting. So you don't need any really special supplies in order to do a little color wheel experiment or just to make your own color mixing wheel. You can use, um, maybe you've got watercolors around your house. Um, these are just little tempera or poster paints. You could also use some household objects just for little palettes. So we have some wax paper that you can spread some paint on. Um, maybe takeout containers or leftovers. I'm actually using this as my water reservoir. I also recommend having some scratch paper around, so it doesn't even have to be a full sheet. You can have little bits and pieces too, and this will help you test out some colors. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and try out making our color wheel and getting all the colors. So what's really neat is that technically you only need really five colors in order to do all the different things that you'll need 
and a color wheel. So I've got my red, my yellow, my blue, my black, and my white. And we'll talk a little bit more about those in a moment. So let's, let's put some red on. True red in its purest form. my brush one. Another supply that's also helpful is that you can have a paper towel or a towel to help dry off your brush so it's not so wet and soupy. So let's do the yellow. And since I already have my yellow out, I can go ahead and make my orange, which will really be just equal amounts of red and yellow. And don't worry, neatness doesn't have to count. You can go ahead and just have some fun and play around with the colors too. And then yellow orange is going to be orange. It's a lot of yellow. And red orange is going to be orange with a lot of red. See? Easy. I'll wash off my brush. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit more yellow so that I can work with the blue too. What's fun is also one thing you're going to start to notice too is when you mix all your paint in this water reservoir, it start, it's gonna start turning into a soupy kind of brown neutral color. And that's an important thing to know too. All the different colors together become a really beautiful brown or neutral color. So here I have my blue and my yellow. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my blue here since my brush is already covered with blue. And 50% of green and 50% of yellow will be green. So you need 50% of blue and 50% of yellow to make green. That's a nice, pretty green. And to make blue green, you just need a little bit more blue. And you only need a touch, really, of that blue to make that yellow green. What do you think? Looks pretty good. Okay, our final color to make will be the spectrum between red and blue, which will be more of our purple colors. So I'm just gonna get a little bit more red. I'm gonna get just a little bit more blue too, just so I can show those colors. Okay, so I've got my blue and I've got a little bit of red. Let's go ahead and make kind of a purple color. So here's our violet. And I'll add a little bit more blue to it to make a blue violet. And let's add a lot of red to that red violet. Looks pretty good. 
The other thing that's really nice about the color wheel too is that it also shows you the opposites or the complementary colors of each, of e how each color works together. So let's take a closer look. If I have my color wheel organized this way, what's really neat is that it also shows you how the complementary colors work between not only the primary, um, but all the secondary and tertiary colors as well. So automatically you know that red is complementary to green. And maybe even more interestingly, blue-violet is complementary to yellow-orange. So you might inherently see these in nature and see, yeah, these colors look great together. Um, What's nice about this is not only can you do experiments like our after image experiment, you can also see how colors work well together. So maybe you're looking at your interiors and trying to design something. Maybe you are putting your own clothes together and trying to see why certain colors look well together. This is an organizational tool to show you how colors work well together. But importantly too, if you wanna use this in your paintings, this will also inform some choices about how different colors pair together. So let's take a look at a little example. So let's take a look at how maybe using some of our knowledge about color theory or color mixing in general can inform some painting that you do. So let's do, maybe we wanna make like a red flower. I'm just gonna freehand just kind of maybe a red flower. Well, maybe I want to fill it in with something maybe a little more dynamic. So let's see if I want to add maybe some of that yellow. And of course, when we add that yellow in, we're going to get a little bit of orange. And these are colors that are relatively close to each other on the color wheel, so they're going to be very warm. And they're going to give us a little bit of a look like that. Well, if I wanted to make a stem, color and I know that I made more or less a red orange color most likely my stem in order to really make it stand out which should be more of a blue green color because these are complementary so let's go ahead and make that I've got a little bit of blue green left over from here and we're gonna use that to make our stem So as you can tell, some of these complementary colors here work really well together. Maybe you really want to make a beautiful brown shadow color so it makes a little bit more um, three-dimensional. A trick is rather than relying on a dark color that you already have like a brown or a black is that you can mix your neutral. So if I have my red-orange color and I'm mixing it with my blue green color i'm gonna probably get like a soupy kind of purpley looking color here it's gonna be kind of a dark color it sounds counterintuitive you think automatically when you think of shadows you think of maybe using a black or gray color but really adding just the complementary colors together gives you that really nice dynamic looking kind of shadow. So that's just a small example about how you can use color to inform some of your art and color choices. Okay, let's do a quick discussion about shades and tints. So as I mentioned before, you can go ahead and actually make your own neutral, but you can also use black to make a shade. So black to any color would make a shade and white to any color will make a tint. And so if you like the color pink, for example, pink is actually a tint of red because you add white, white to red. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Put some white and some black on my palette.
What's important to note is that the same rules apply when you add black or white to any color. So if, for example, I add white to this orange color and make it sort of like maybe a peachy tone, and I add white to this blue tone to make it a light blue, those colors will still be inherently complementary. So the same science works. So let's add black to maybe this purple color. It's purple or violet, and I've got a shade now of violet, but maybe I'll use Okay. So really just the black, more common sense, just makes anything darker in terms of the colors in our color wheel. Um, maybe let's make pink. We'll add that to So it just adds a whole different characteristic to it. And usually when you're painting, you can just go back and forth between the different colors that you have. Um, just keeping those rules in mind of using shades and tints and complementary colors. So hopefully you can use your color wheel as a tool to help inform your art and also maybe make any choices for anything related to decoration or anything related to color in general. Uh, this is a really fun way to help just examine what you're looking at. Keep in mind that color is, in fact, a science. It's how your brain perceives things. So I hope you had it fun and enjoyed looking at our color wheel. I'm going to show you how to continue your learning on color theory by accessing some different resources we have at the library. The easiest thing to do is to go at our homepage at planolibrary.org and this is the look of our website here. We have a handy little search box at the top. Under search the library, I went ahead and put in color theory. I'm going to go ahead and put search. And what this is going to do is give you access to different resources we have on this topic from a variety of different databases and resources. At the top, you're going to see your login for full access. So this will require your library card information, which I'm going to go ahead and do. And once it opens it up, it's going to give you the content that you have access to with your library card. So by typing into color theory, I was able to get a research starter here. And this is basically an entry from Salem Press Encyclopedia. going to give you a little bit more information regarding color theory and some of the science that we discussed earlier. If I go back, I could also make my search a little more detailed. Right now I've got a large number of results, so maybe I'm more interested in a video. I'll go ahead and filter by format and I'll put video. Right here at the top, you can see that there is a color theory and color and light resource from the great courses. And this will give you a web link you could click. That will allow you to log in with your information and you can watch it on your computer or if you happen to have a smart TV or another uh, app method, you can go ahead and look at Canopy that way. If you scroll down, you can also do how to paint. Here's some basics of color theory as well. It's another visual from Great Courses. You can open up each entry and get some more information, but it also will give you that web link as well. So this is just another way you can find some more information regarding color theory. You can always filter by format. 
You can look at specific magazines if you wish here. If there's something you want that's a certain publication date maybe you know about, you could always do that. And that's just another way to continue some learning. Well, thank you for joining and I hope you had fun mixing some colors with me. Hopefully you have another tool that you can use for your own art and your own interest. If you're looking for other programs, please check out our website at planolibrary.org.